Hi, this is Pam from Wood Camper Crafts, where all of my crochet patterns are inspired by nature. Today I'm going to teach you how to make the Rainforest Baby Booties. And for those of you who enjoy written copies of my patterns, I will make this one available in my Etsy shop. Before we get started, you'll need a 4mm crochet hook for the booties, a 5mm crochet hook for the cuff, a stitch marker, darning needle, and scissors. I'm using Lion's Brand Wool Ease yarn, which comes in a ton of different colors. It's a medium weight yarn and it's acrylic wool blend. You can use this yarn or any yarn of a similar weight. This pattern is written for zero to three months. The easiest way to adjust the size is by changing the size of the hook or the weight of the yarn. If you're a more advanced crocheter, you can also start with a longer or shorter chain and then add or remove stitches from the beginning or end of each row. Start by making a slip knot. Then insert your hook. Whoops, there we go. And pull tight. We're going to start by chaining 35. Yarn over and pull through. That's one. Yarn over and pull through. That's two. Yarn over and pull through. That's three. So you're going to continue working on this on your own and you're chaining 35. I'll meet you back here when you're all done. I finished chaining 35 and I'm ready to start row one. You can see there's my first chain and my second chain. I'm inserting into the second chain from my hook and I'm doing a single crochet. So yarn over and pull through. I have two loops on my hook. Yarn over and pull through both loops to complete my single crochet. So if you're using stitch markers, remember to place the stitch marker on that first stitch. And I'm gonna continue on just doing single crochets in this row and I'm going to be doing 34 in total. So there's my second single crochet. And you just have to make sure that your chain doesn't twist. Make sure it's nice and flat. So there's my third single crochet. And I'll let you work on this on your own. Remember you are doing 34 single crochets in total and I will meet you just before the last stitch in the row. This is my final stitch in row one. I'm doing a single crochet. And then at the end of every row, I'm going to chain one and turn. I'm ready to start row two. We are doing single crochets in the next 15 stitches. So here's my first single crochet. If you're using stitch markers, you're going to place your stitch marker on this first stitch in the row. And then we're working another single crochet in the next stitch. I'll let you work on this on your own. You're doing 15 single crochets in total. And I will meet you back here to show you the next step in row two. So I've just completed the 15 single crochets. So in the next four stitches, we're going to place two single crochets in each stitch. So here's my first one. I've got one single crochet. And working in that same stitch, I'm going to place my second single crochet. So I'm going to do this three more times for a total of four. So in this stitch here, I'm placing two single crochets. There's my first. And one more single crochet working in that same stitch. So we've done this twice now. So now here's the third time, placing our first single crochet Working in that same stitch, we're doing another single crochet. And so this is our fourth and final one here. We're doing two single crochets in the same stitch. So there's one. And working in that same stitch, we're going to place 
another single crochet. So now we're going back to just doing single crochets in each stitch. We're doing this 15 times. So there's our first one. And then working in the next stitch, we are doing a single crochet. So we're doing this 15 times in total. I'll meet you just before the last stitch in the row. This is our final stitch in row two. We're placing a single crochet in this final stitch. And then we are going to chain one and turn. So we're starting row three. We're doing single crochets in the next 38 stitches. If you're using your stitch marker, you can put it on that first stitch in the row. So there's our first single crochet and our second single crochet. So I'll let you work on this on your own. You're doing 38 single crochets in total and I'll meet you just before the last stitch in the row. This is our last stitch in row three. We're doing a single crochet. At the end of every row, we're going to chain one and turn. So in row four, we're going to start by doing single crochets in the next 17 stitches. So here's our first single crochet. If you're using stitch markers, you can put a stitch marker on that first stitch. And our second single crochet. You can work on this on your own. You are doing 17 single crochets in total, and I will meet you back here for the next step. Just like we did in row two, we're working two single crochets in the next four stitches. So there's our first single crochet. And then going back into that same stitch, we're doing another single crochet. And we're gonna do this four times in total. So there's our first one. So in the next stitch, we're working two single crochets. And then insert your hook into that same stitch. So we've done this twice now. So insert your hook into the next stitch and you're doing two single crochets. And then insert your hook into that same stitch. So we've done this three times now. And this is going to be the fourth and last time. So we're doing two single crochets. There's our first one. And then inserting our hook into that same stitch. We're doing an another single crochet. So now we're back to just doing single crochets in each of the next 17 stitches. So there's one single crochet, and then working in the next one, another single crochet. So you can work on this on your own. You're doing 17 in total, and I will meet you back here before the final stitch in the row. This is our final stitch in row four. We're doing a single crochet. And then at the end of every row, we chain one and turn. We're starting row five. In the first stitch, we're placing two single crochets. Here's our first single crochet. And then we're going to insert our hook into that same stitch. And this is our second single crochet. Remember, if you're using stitch markers to place your stitch marker on the first stitch in the row. Now we're doing single crochets in the next 
13 stitches. So there's one, and two. So you can work on this on your own. I'll meet you back here for the next step. Just remember you're doing 13 single crochets. I finished the 13 single crochets. Now I'm doing a single crochet two together. So insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over and pull through. You have two loops on your hook. And insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over and pull through. You have three loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through all three loops. Now we're doing yarn over slip stitches. So yarn over first, insert your hook into the next stitch, and then yarn over and pull through. We have three loops on our hook. To make it easy, we're gonna push this middle loop out a bit so we can get behind it. And we're just pulling through all the loops on our hook to complete the slip stitch. So we're gonna do this 10 times in total. That was the first. So once again, we're doing a slip stitch, but we're starting by yarning over. Insert your hook into the next stitch. Yarn over and pull through. You have three loops on your hook. Push that middle loop out so you can get behind it. And then pull your hook through all the loops to complete your slip stitch. You can finish working the yarn over slip stitches on your own. Remember you're doing 10 in total. And I'll meet you back here for the next step. We've completed our 10 yarn over slip stitches. Now we're doing a single crochet two together. Insert the hook, yarn over and pull through. You have two loops on your hook. Insert into the next stitch, yarn over and pull through. You have three loops on your hook. Yarn over and pull through all three loops. Now we're gonna do single crochets in the next 13 stitches. You can work on this on your own and I will meet you just before the final stitch in the row. This is our final stitch in row five. We're doing two single crochets in the same stitch. So here's our first single crochet, and then inserting that hook into the same stitch, we're doing a second single crochet, And at the end of every row, we chain one and turn. We're starting row six. We're going to do single crochets in the next 14 stitches. So here's our first single crochet. and our second single crochet. So you can work on this on your own. You're doing 14 single crochets in total and I'll meet you back here for the next step. We finished the 14 single crochets and we're doing a single crochet two together now. Insert your hook and yarn over, pull through. You have two loops on your hook. Insert into the next stitch, yarn over and pull through. You have three loops on your hook yarn over and pull through all three loops. Before we start the next section, I'm going to show you the placement of your hook. Normally you would place your hook right there under that slip stitch and right there and right there. But instead of working in that slip stitch, we're gonna look just behind the slip stitch and you can see that single diagonal loop. And that is where we're going to be placing our hook. It's actually really easy to get your hook in there. So just there and right there. So you're just working under the one loop. So there's the slip stitch and here's the loop we're working under. So just the diagonal loop right here. Now that you know the placement of the hook, we're ready to start. We're doing single crochets under that diagonal loop and we're going to do it in the next 10 stitches. So there's our first single crochet. So find that diagonal loop right there. It's behind that slip stitch. Insert your hook and you're doing a single crochet. 
So we've done two, and there's the diagonal loop, and that's three. And here's four. And here's the final and tenth diagonal loop we're working under. And we're just doing the single crochet there. Now we're going to do a single crochet two together. So insert your hook under both loops in the next stitch, yarn over and pull through. You have two loops, insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over and pull through. You have three loops, yarn over and pull through all three loops. We're going to finish off this row by just doing single crochets in the next 14 stitches. You can work on this on your own and I will meet you just before the final stitch in the row. We're at the end of the row. We've got one final stitch. We're just doing a single crochet. And at the end of every row, we will chain one and turn. We're starting row seven with single crochets in the next 13 stitches. There's our first single crochet, and you can put that stitch marker on the first stitch in the row. And our second single crochet. I'll let you work on this on your own. You're doing 13 single crochets in total, and I will meet you back here for the next step. We're now doing a single crochet two together. Insert your hook, yarn over and pull through. You have two loops. Insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over and pull through. You have three loops, yarn over and pull through all three loops. Just like row five, we're doing 10 yarn over slip stitches. So I've yarned over, I'm inserting my hook into the stitch, yarn over and pull through. And then I'm going to continue to pull through all the loops on my hook to complete my slip stitch. We'll do that one more time together. Yarn over, insert your hook into the stitch, yarn over and pull through. You can use that finger to push out that middle stitch to make it easier to get under. And we're pulling through all the loops on our hook to complete the slip stitch. So you can finish working on this on your own. You're doing 10 yarn over slip stitches in total. And I will meet you back here for the next step. Now we're doing a single crochet two together. Insert your hook, yarn over and pull through. You have two loops. Insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over and pull through. You have three loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through all three loops. We're gonna complete this row by doing single crochets in the next 13 stitches. You can work on this on your own and we'll do the final one together. This is our last stitch in row seven. We're doing a single crochet. And then at the end of every row, we're going to chain one and turn. We're starting row eight by doing single crochets in the next 12 stitches. I will let you work on this on your own and I'll meet you back here for the next step. So just remember 12 single crochets. Now we're doing a single crochet two together. Insert your hook, yarn over and pull through. You have two loops. Insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over and pull through. You have three loops, yarn over and pull through all three loops. So you've done this before. We're doing single crochets. Look at it from the top again. We're not working in that stitch. We're working in that diagonal loop behind the slip stitch. And we're doing 10 single crochets in total. So we've inserted our hook into that diagonal loop and we're just doing a single crochet. And then working in the next diagonal loop, look at it from the top again. We're not working in that stitch. 
We're working in that diagonal loop, just doing a single crochet. You can continue working on this on your own. We're doing 10 in total and I'll meet you back here for the next step. Now we're doing a single crochet two together. So insert your hook, yarn over and pull through. You have two loops on your hook. Insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over and pull through. You have three loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through all three loops. We're going to finish this row by doing single crochets in the next 12 stitches. You can work on this on your own and I'll meet you back here and we'll do the last stitch in the row together. This is our final stitch in row 8. We're doing a single crochet. At the end of every row, we're going to chain 1 and turn. We're starting row 9. We're going to do a single crochet in the next 11 stitches. There's our first single crochet and you can put your stitch marker on that first stitch in the row. I'm going to continue on. I'm doing 11 single crochets in total. I'll let you work on this on your own and I'll meet you back here for the next step. I've finished my 11 single crochets. Now I'm doing a single crochet two together. Insert my hook, yarn over and pull through. I have two loops. Insert my hook into the next stitch, yarn over and pull through. I have three loops, yarn over and pull through all three loops. So you've done this before. We're doing yarn over slip stitches in the next 10 stitches. So yarn over, insert your hook into the stitch, yarn over and pull through. To make it easier, you can push that middle stitch out and you're pulling your hook through all the loops to complete your slip stitch. Yarn over, insert your hook into the next stitch. Yarn over and pull through. And then pull through all the loops on your hook to complete your slip stitch. You can work on this on your own and I will meet you back here for the next step. Remember you're doing 10 in total. Now we're doing a single crochet two together. So insert your hook, yarn over and pull through. You have two loops. Insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over and pull through. You have three loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through all three loops. We're finishing row nine by doing single crochets in the next 11 stitches. So there's my first single crochet. You can work on this on your own and I'll meet you back here and we'll do the last stitch together. We're at the end of row nine. We have one stitch to go. We're doing a single crochet. And at the end of every row, we're going to chain one and turn. We're starting row 10 and we're doing a single crochet in the next 10 stitches. So there's our first single crochet. If you're using a stitch marker, you can place it on that first stitch in the row. And our second single crochet. I'll let you work on this on your own. You're doing 10 single crochets in total and I'll meet you back here for the next step. Now we're doing a single crochet two together. Insert your hook yarn over and pull through. You have two loops on your hook. Insert your hook into the next stitch. Yarn over and pull through. You have three loops on your hook. Yarn over and pull through all three loops. So now we're doing our 10 single crochets. Remember to look at it from the top. You're not working in that stitch. You're working in the diagonal loop behind the stitch. So insert your hook just under that single diagonal loop and you're doing a single crochet. So there's one. So look at it from the top and then find that diagonal loop behind and you're just doing a single crochet. You can work on this on your own. Remember you're doing 10 single crochets in total and I'll meet you back here for the next step. And now we're doing a single crochet two together. 
insert your hook into the stitch, yarn over and pull through. You have two loops on your hook. Insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over and pull through. You have three loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through all three loops. And now we're going to finish off the row. We are doing 10 single crochets in total. I'll let you work on this on your own and we'll do the last stitch in the row together. This is the final stitch in row 10. We're doing a single crochet. This is also the final row before the cuff. So at the end of this row, we are not chaining one. I've grabbed my five millimeter hook and we're ready to start the cuff by chaining 15. So yarn over and pull through, that's chain one. Yarn over and pull through, that's two and three. So you're doing 15 in total and I will meet you back here for the next step. So I finished chaining 15 and we're working along the chain this way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out my hook and just turn it around here so I can work on the back side of the chain. So we're starting in the second chain from the hook. So there's my second chain and I'm doing a slip stitch. So yarn over and pull through all the loops on my hook. I highly recommend for the cuff that you use stitch markers so you would place it on that first stitch in the row. So now we're doing our second slip stitch. And you're going to keep doing this. You're going to be doing 14 slip stitches in total. So make sure you count. You're doing 14 slip stitches and I will meet you back here when you're done and I'll show you the next step. I've finished my 14 slip stitches and you can see on the last one there that I've placed a stitch marker which you'll see why that's really important to put that stitch marker on there. So now we're working along the top of our last row. So we're going to be working in that first stitch here and we're just doing a slip stitch. So there's our first slip stitch and then we're working in our next stitch there and we are also doing a slip stitch. And then we are going to chain one and turn. So I'm just going to pause here and show you. This is our chain one and then we had those two slip stitches that we did along the top of row 10 and then our slip stitch that we put our stitch marker on. So when we start here it's very important to have that stitch marker because that's the stitch that we're starting in. We're going to skip those two slip stitches. So this is the stitch we're starting in. But I'm also going to pause here and show you that we're working in the front loop only. So when you look at your stitches from the top, you can see your front loop and your back loop. And the front loop here is the loop we're working under, not this back loop. Whoops. So here's the front loop. That's the loop we're working under. And that's your back loop. So we're not working under that one. There's a front loop we're working under. That's the back loop. So we're working under just this front loop only, just right here. Now we're ready to get started. So once again, there's the chain one. We're not working in that. Slip stitch, slip stitch, we're not working in that. And that's the stitch right there that had our stitch marker on it. So we're working in that stitch right there. So we're going to be working under that front loop only. There we go and we're doing a slip stitch. So once again, I'm going to pause here. It's really important to use stitch markers for this cuff until you get used to this technique. So I'm going to put my stitch marker just on that first slip stitch in the row. So there's my first one and we are doing 14 slip stitches in total working in that front loop only. So once again, there's my front loop. So just working under that single front loop there and we're doing a slip stitch. 
So that's my second one. Working under the front loop only. There we go, and we're doing a slip stitch. So that's three. So I'll let you finish this on your own. Remember you are doing 14 slip stitches in total, working in that front loop only, and I will meet you at the end of the row. So I'm gonna demonstrate this again for you. We're starting row three now, and you can look at the slip stitch and you see there's my front loop and my back loop. We're working in that front loop only, which is also the loop here that's the easiest to get into. And we're doing 14 slip stitches in total. So there's my first slip stitch. You can put a stitch marker on the first stitch in the row. And then working in that front loop only, I'm doing another slip stitch. And then I'm working once again in that front loop only. That loop is the easiest one to get into, so it's easy to identify. So I'm gonna keep working along here. I'm doing 14 slip stitches in total, working in my front loop only. And I'll let you work on this on your own, and I'll meet you back here for the next step. So I've completed my 14 slip stitches, and I'm going to place that stitch marker on the final stitch here. Whoops, there we go. So that's important so you know where to start your next row. So now again, we're working along the top and we're going to do two slip stitches. So if you hold this up straight, you can see I've already worked in that stitch there. So that's the easy way to identify where your next stitch is. So we're working in the stitch right here. So I'm gonna insert my hook and we're doing a slip stitch. And now I'm going to insert my hook into the next stitch, doing another slip stitch. So these are the two slip stitches that in the next row we're going to skip. So we're gonna chain one and turn. We're starting row four. Skip the first two slip stitches in the row and start in the slip stitch indicated by your stitch marker. We're working under that front loop only, and we're doing a slip stitch. So yarn over and pull through all the loops on your hook. I'm gonna pause here, and I'm going to place that stitch marker on the first stitch. And we're just gonna keep going here. We're doing slip stitches, working under that front loop only, and we're doing this 14 times. Now that I've showed you the sequence a few times, you keep repeating this until you have 32 rows in total. You can pause this video and work on this on your own, and then meet me back here and we'll do the last two rows together. We're starting row 31. We're doing 14 slip stitches working under that front loop only. You can work on this on your own and I'll meet you back here just before the stitch marker. We've reached that stitch marker and we have one more slip stitch to complete the 14. So I'm just removing the stitch marker, working under that front loop only, and we're doing a slip stitch. I'm going to pause here and place my stitch marker on that 14th stitch. I wanted to do row 31 with you so I could show you that you should have two stitches left along that top row. So we're gonna do our two final slip stitches. For some reason, if you have three stitches left along the top row, that's okay. Instead of two slip stitches, you can do three. You don't need to take out all of your work. And at the end of the row, I'm going to chain one and turn. This is row 32, our final row. You skip those first two slip stitches, 
starting in the stitch indicated by the stitch marker. And we're working under that front loop only. We're doing 14 slip stitches in total. And there's no need to put your stitch marker back on because this is our final row. So there's your first one and your second one. Now we're ready to sew our baby booty together using the mattress stitch. I'm just taking off my hook. I'm going to grab my end, which I've already cut a nice long end. And I'm going to insert my darning needle. I'm going to place my darning needle through that final loop, pull my yarn, and I'm just going to pull tight to knot. Now we're going to fold our booty in half. Make sure you have the right side. You can see that's the inside. And this is the outside with that ribbing on the toe. So the ribbing on the toe, you should fold it so you can't see it. So it's on the inside right now. We're going to line up our edges. And to make it easier if you want, you can grab stitch markers just to hold your work together while you're sewing. There we go. And now we're going to sew it together using the mattress stitch. So I'm going to go into the opposite side here, working from the inside out, just under the loop there, and I'm going to pull through. So with the mattress stitch, we're always working in between here from the inside to the outside in that opposite stitch. So once again, inserting our needle from the inside to the out, working in that opposite stitch. So going through the middle here, working from the inside to the outside in that opposite stitch. So this is the mattress stitch. I like this stitch. It's a nice invisible stitch. And you can just keep working on this on your own. And I will meet you back here where you're all done. And I will show you how to weave in your ends. I finished sewing the booty together and I've knotted the end here and now I'm ready to weave in my ends. So I'm going to work in one direction under a few stitches here. And then I'm just going to pull my needle through. And I'm going to turn around and now working in the opposite direction, I'm going to skip that first stitch I just came out of and then go back under the same loops in the opposite direction. And then I'm just going to keep doing this a few times. So skip that first stitch I just came out of, working back through the stitches in the opposite direction. And then once you're all done here, you can just cut your end. So let me know in the comments below what you think of this new video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button and it really helps me out if you guys subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching everyone.